Now that we've found the x and the y components of various vectors, how do we go about adding those vectors together? Remember what we said yesterday? The goal, the goal is always to get what? A right angle triangle. Let's say I want to add these three vectors together, 200 meters to the east, 100 meters to the south, 75 meters to the west. If I want to add these vectors together, do I have a right angle triangle? Do I have a triangle? No, you can't have a right angle triangle if you don't even have a triangle. Hey, this is some kind of weird shape, whatever. We have to turn this into a right angle triangle. Now, I want you to notice something, though, before I do turn it into a right angle triangle. All of these vectors that I've drawn here, all of these vectors that I'm, that I'm adding together are all, all drawn in a very specific way. They're all drawn, here, let me change the color of this. They're all drawn head to tail. See this? 200 meters, the head of the 200 meters is drawn to the tail of the 100 meters. The head of the 100 is drawn to the tail of the 75. Okay, when you're adding vectors together, they must be drawn head to tail. And if when you draw them head to tail, you get a right angle triangle right off the top. Beautiful. Excellent. Makes the question easier. If you don't, that's okay. That's when we have to use our vector component thing that we've been dealing with for the last, well, the second part of yesterday and earlier today. Notice, by the way, one more vector here, this dotted line as I have it drawn. You may choose to draw it as a dotted line. You may choose to make it a different color, whatever. This is what we call our resultant vector. And the resultant vector is the sum of all the other vectors. So if I'm adding scalars, 200 plus 100 plus 75, the answer is 375. But if I'm adding vectors, 200 plus 100 plus 75, I get, well, whatever that dotted line is, that resultant vector. Again, the goal is get a right angle triangle. We want that resultant vector to be a resultant on a right angle triangle, not the resultant on some funny shape that I've got right here. So in order to do that, we have to find the x and y components of each of these vectors, and then we have to combine them. So let's look at x components first. The x component of the 200 meters is what? How much of that 200 meters is x? 200 meters. Make sense? What's the, let's deal with uh, one vector at a time. What's the y component of the 200 meters? Zero because it's all on the x-axis, right? Okay, well, what's the x component of the second vector, the 100 meters? How much of that 100 meters is on the x-axis, Marcos? How much of this one is x-axis? Zero. How much of it is y-axis? Anybody? What is it? Negative 100. It's negative 100 because it's going down. Now it's important to have that negative in there. It's really important to have that negative in there now. Um, what's the x component of the third one, the 75 meters? Negative 75 meters. We know it's negative because it's going to the left. What's the x, sorry, the y component of that third one? Zero, because it's all on the x-axis. Now we've got to add them together. 200 plus 0 plus negative 75 is 125. Uh, one, 0 plus negative 100 plus 0 is negative 100 meters. Does that make sense what I've done? I found the x and y components of each of those vectors. I've combined all the x's, and I've combined all the y's. Yeah. I haven't done anything with them yet, but I found components. Now, you can imagine how this is a little bit of a, of a simpler problem than you see sometimes, because you can imagine if I'm dealing with some angle like 30 degrees, the components of the vectors are harder to find, right? But we can do it because we've done it. We just have to do what we're doing here along with the harder, the sine, cos, tan analysis of those funny angles. Okay. Now, watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take this 100 meters that is x component, and I'm going to draw a new vector. I'm going to draw it to the right. How do I know to draw that 125 to the right? 
because it's positive. So I'm going to draw 125 to the right. And then I'm going to take this 100 meters and I'm going to draw it. It's on the y-axis. How do I know to draw it down? Because it's negative. Um, I can label it as negative 100 here, or I, I don't really need to label it as negative here because the arrow indicates the direction. I can just leave it positive if I want. Now, look. Notice these are drawn head to tail, right? But the resultant vector, which goes from start to finish, look at it. It's the same as what I had drawn up here, right? It's the same resultant vector. This resultant vector R right here is the same as this resultant vector R right here. But the beauty of my second one is that it's now, what was my goal? You get a right angle triangle. That's what I got, isn't it? So now I can deal with this, right? I turned this which is a vector diagram that shows the sum of all these vectors into this, which is a vector diagram that shows the sum of all the vectors. That's an easier one to deal with. So now how do I find R? You guys told me this uh, yesterday. Pythagorean theorem. We're going to say A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Or we'd say... Um, we'd say c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. r is c, so we're going to say it's the square root of a squared plus b squared. Good. Now, let's do this on the calculator. Let's say second function, square root, see some brackets here, 125 squared plus 100 squared, and those brackets, I get a value here of 160. So, when we add 200 meters to the east, plus 100 meters to the south, plus 75 meters to the west, what's the sum of those vectors? 160. But wait, when we add vectors together, we get a vector, right? And vectors have magnitude and direction. So there's one more thing that we got to do, and that is to label a direction. The direction is going to be given by an angle, and that angle is going to be always at the start of your vector diagram. So if I started right here and went over and down, and then do my resultant from the start to the finish, my angle is going to be at the start. Now, Forget about the resultant for a second. Maybe you made a mistake with this. Maybe you calculated that 160 wrong. The 125 and the 100 are right. So let's use those to find that angle. Which side of the triangle is the 125? Adjacent. Which side is the 100? Opposite, yeah. Um, which trig function goes with opposite and adjacent? Tan. We're going to say, because we're looking for theta, we're going to say theta is the inverse tan or second function tan of opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Now, let's pull out the calculator for this one. We should just double check to make sure we're in the right mode here. Remember what that check was? Before we do any calculations with angles, we really should say sine 90 every day just to make sure it equals 1. Make sure we're in the right mode, degree mode. Okay, I am. So now I'm going to say the inverse tan, second function tan, of 100 over 125. Gives me uh, to two digits. Actually, should be 39 degrees. This one should actually be 1.6 times 10 to the 2. Because because of two digits data, right? So final answer should be two digits for both. 1.6 times 10 to the 2 at 39 degrees. Get it? Now, in a little while, probably not today, but in a little while, we're going to actually express this just a little bit better. We're not going to say 39 degrees. We're going to say 39 degrees something relative to something. 
We're not going to worry about that right now because I think that's a little bit too much at once. Right now, if you can find the hypotenuse and the angle, um, I'm happy right now. Okay, is that good? So, what do you got to do here? Well, the goal is to always remember this in the back of your mind. The goal is get a right angle triangle. I got one right here, but I didn't have one when I started. My vector diagram is drawn head to tail as it's supposed to be when I'm adding these vectors together. It's not a right angle triangle, so I got to make it into one by finding the components. Find all the x's, add them up. Find all the y's, add them up. Then draw a new right sorry, draw a new vector diagram which will be a right angle triangle. And then just do your thing with that. Let's take a look at worksheet number seven. Um, you can see in question one and two that adding these vectors are, are straightforward, right? We don't have to worry about drawing diagrams and doing triangles for these because these are all in one dimension, right? So I'm going to have you do question one and two. Those are straightforward. Question three, four, and five. If we're adding 20 meters to the east, 10 meters to the north, 15 to the east, 10 meters to the south, and so on, um, these aren't so bad either, because when we draw the resultant vector from start to finish, we have, what do we have? Right. right angle triangle, which is what we want, right? We solve for the value of R and theta without worrying about vector components, right? But when we do a question like number six, number seven even, we have to worry about those, right? Like, you draw a resultant vector from start to finish here, that's not a right angle triangle. So you got to make it into a right angle triangle by adding up all the x's, adding up all the y's, and then redrawing it with an x and a y to get a right angle triangle. Make sense? Okay, so what I'd like you to do right now is questions one to, let's go one to seven. Questions one to seven. The first couple are going to go ridiculously quick. The next few are going to go not too bad. Questions six and seven are going to be the ones that take the time for us. Okay.